half million people have now received their first dose of a coronavirus vaccine. Well, Boris Johnson is said to be frustrated by the pace of the rollout and GPs have told Good Morning Britain they could be vaccinating people more quickly if they had a more reliable supply. Well, joining mm. us now is the Medical Director for Primary Care for NHS England, Dr Nikki Kanani. Well, good morning to you. Um, can I ask you just a very direct question? How many vaccines do we currently have available? How many vaccines we currently have available? So that shifts really quickly, Piers. Um, we have vaccine that's available in the wholesale of the PhD, and um, we are getting the majority of it out every week, every day, um, because obviously we don't want vaccines sitting in um, with the wholesalers. We want it out um, largely with general practice, as you said, doing an incredible job getting so many people vaccinated. But there are lots of reports kind of today that the, the GPs aren't getting enough. They want to move faster. Mm. There's a the government trying to say there's no need for 24-7 vaccination, and yet we're at this critical moment of the, of the pandemic. You can't help but think one of the reasons they don't want 24-7 is because they haven't got there's the physical vaccines supply. to give out. So the supply is absolutely crucial, isn't it? What we're trying to do, working with government and the wholesalers, is make sure that the supply reaches people in a in a fair way, so that across the country, uh, particularly our priority cohorts one and two, who are our kind of utmost focus for this program over the coming weeks, um, get their vaccine equally across the country. What we can't have is one patch um, in the north, for example, getting through their priority cohorts really quickly, but then people say in the south not having access to the vaccine. So every um, site that has been designated a vaccine site. The vast majority of general practice led, so these incredible teams, um, pharmacy, hospital hubs and vaccine centres all have vaccine this week. They will all get vaccine next week. And as those supplies increase, we will continue to ramp up. Well, why and we so not go 24-7 in a lot of these places? At the moment, um, we need more, you know, we are working on the amount of supply that we have. Um, right, so, so there is a supply issue. So when the government says, well, we can't, you know, we can't uh, do 24-7, no the, the reason is actually supply of vaccines. Yeah. So the supply that we have in this country at the moment is what we're working on as an NHS to get out to the sites. And... Um, at the moment, the sites are working really hard. And can, I, can we just take a moment just to say thank you to those sites? Because they've spent um, hours, weekends, evenings um, yeah, setting we can. up. And then we can also take a moment to, pray, to praise everybody involved because we are currently number three in the world list of vaccinations per 100,000 people in population. So this is a very good achievement so far. But we also have yeah. one of the worst case rates right now in the world. So the battle to get people vaccinated is extremely important. I mean, just one, one final thing for you. Um, your overview right now, the situation inside hospitals, how critical is the situation? It's really pressured. It's, um, you know, staff are absolutely working um, beyond all of their time and energy. Is this the worst um, you've known it? Yes. Yes, it is. It is the worst um, for staff, for services, for services across the health sector. So, you know, uh, please, please, please follow the guidance. Stay at home. Do as Vin said last night and Chris Whitty said before. Act as though you have COVID. Stay at home and look after yourself and your family because that's what we need you to do right okay. now. Um, Dr Kanani, us... before we let you go, I just want to ask about the uh, second dose and the delay because we're about to have yeah. a debate about that uh, right now. Um, sure. We had Sir Geoffrey Boycott yesterday who was unconvinced about the fact that there would be um, uh, enough immunity uh, if you have to wait three months now between Pfizer vaccines. What is the evidence that it will give you the same degree of immunity after three months as after three weeks? So, the, uh, just 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 to recap for people who aren't aware, the JCBI and the UK CMOs, the Chief Medical Officers, set out um, a, a policy change on the 30th of December that said increase the dose uh, interval from three weeks to 12 weeks, and that allows us to have far more people protected as quickly as possible. So after you have your first dose, it takes a few weeks to build your immunity. Um, so you get to about 53%, but you could be getting up to 90% as you hit that 12 week window. So, uh, you know, the rules stay the same for everyone. We still have to protect ourselves, wear our masks, wash our hands, maintain okay. our social distance. It just means we can vaccinate more people, which is really, really important. Okay. Uh, Dr. Gunnar, we appreciate you joining us. Thank you very much, Jake. Keep up the good work. Thank we appreciate you. it. Journalist Dame Joan Bakewell has launched a legal challenge against the government's decision to allow a 12-week delay between the first and second doses of the Pfizer vaccine.
And uh, she joins us now alongside broadcaster Dame Esther Ranson, who was due to have her second jab today. Uh, it's been pushed back. Global public health expert Professor Debbie Schreeder also joins us. And, of course, Dr Hillary uh, here as well. Dame Joan Bakewell, you're launching legal action over this delay. Why is that? Um, I'm interested in the fact that the, the vaccination that is delayed should be backed up by data, and it isn't as, at the moment. I'm interested in the, of course, getting as many people vaccinated as possible. How could one not mm. want that to be so? However, I don't want the fact that there's a delay in the Pfizer vaccine to 12, uh, to 12 weeks to in any way invalidate that vaccination. I mean, I've got a letter here from someone who is supporting my move, and he's an older person, just wrote in to me. I do not want to be walking around with false assurance that I am immune to COVID, thereby putting myself and others at risk and adding to the already heavy burden on the health service. But what we know, the Dame Joan, is this. Uh, we, we believe we know this, that once you have the first Pfizer vaccine, in the first few days, you have a 52% or so efficacy, protection, immunity, whatever you want to call it. But that after three weeks, that actually moves up to 89%, which is 20% more than most of the flu jabs on a seasonal basis. So it gives you incredible protection after three weeks, just the one jab. Uh, I'd like to... I'm, I'm pleased if, to, if you can give me the data that says that, but Pfizer themselves don't say that. They haven't tested it at that extension. And the World Health Authority also says that hasn't been demonstrated in the data. No, okay, I'm well, sorry, well, sorry. I think bring in Professor missing... Sridhar here, because... Yeah, that's we, the... we need to establish... Professor Sridhar, after three weeks, you do have 89% protection. I think that is clear in the data. The, the well, issue that's... is over the three-month delay and what protection you would get with that uh, extension. Yeah, exactly. So the JCVI, which is the body in the UK which made this decision and is made up of scientists, as well as the British Society of Immunology, have come out and said that given that more people can be protected and protected from hospitalization and death, and given the high efficacy of the first dose, that this would be the correct way forward. But I understand Dame Beagle's concerns because we are one of the few countries to be doing this. The United States is not taking this but path. Is the data there, Devi, that says after three weeks after the first Pfizer vac uh, vaccine jab, you are 89% protected? So I, it's, it's kind of in a typical academic way. It's there and it's not there. So the JCVI have modeled this based on what they think will happen and kind of estimating it. So it's an estimation based on a scientific assumption about immunity. But it's not there. I don't think Pfizer itself has released that data. OK, let's bring in Dame Esther. Dame Esther, you were supposed to have your second jab. It's been postponed, but you're pleased about that. Why? Well, I certainly am, because um, due to my great age, two things are true. One is that I am more vulnerable to serious illness if I catch it. The other is that I am not a frontline worker. And by frontline worker, I don't just mean doctors and nurses, wonderful as they are. I mean Roy, my postman, who gives me a cheery wave every morning. I mean the guys who deliver my groceries uh, once a week to me. I mean the dustmen and women. I mean all those people in that extraordinary life-saving chain, which means that they have to meet other people. I don't have to meet other people. I am self-shielding. I am of, of an age when I can do that. They have to meet other people, the people who stack shelves in supermarkets. I want them to have my second jab. It's terribly important to me that they keep going. And for their own health, we know this new mutation is starting to hit younger people than the first kind of virus. I want them to have this 89% protection. All right, I'll have my second jab in 12 weeks. And as I understand it, it will increase the longevity of my immunity. Thank you. I don't regard it as a right. I regard it as a privilege. I think one of the but... problems, and the reason I have sympathy with Jeff Boycott and with uh, Dame Jones, I think one of the problems is people were told you've got to have your second Pfizer jab in three weeks. It's very important. And then suddenly it's deemed not so very important. And as Devi says, the science is sort of there or it's not. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a battle to, to worth having, yeah. uh, Dame Jones. Dr Hillary, just, let's go, get, just Let's quickly, get the answers. Nobody, nobody doesn't want more people to have the vaccine. 
people are just concerned who've had the first vaccine, are they going to get the protection yeah. they well, need? Well, they want to know how protected they're going to be. Look, if, if there was going to be a legal challenge down the line, it would surely be for people who've got no protection whatsoever. When we have vaccine yeah. available and we're thinking of giving it to people who've already got a good level of protection from the first dose. Yeah. For me, right. that would be the legal challenge. I'm with Esther, I'm with Debbie on this, that you can't look at a certain small set of data in a limited amount of trials where you've got massive experience saying that you've got good immunity after the first dose, give uh, a delay to the second dose that okay. more people... Well, we